A trans match can tune out SWR, but only between the transmitter and the input of the tuner. It cannot tune out SWR between the tuner and the antenna. Some hams and CB operators think the tuner wipes out all standing waves in a line, but that's a myth. First, we have to understand what determines SWR. We need to burn this into our brains. The level of standing waves is set by one thing and one thing only. The match between the coax and the impedance of the load at the feed point. So, if you have coax with a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, and the impedance of the antenna feed point is 100 ohms, divide 100 by 50, your SWR is 2 to 1. And it is 2 to 1 everywhere along the length of the transmission line. Don't care what your SWR meter says, it's a fact. Now, two things can trick your SWR meter into thinking your SWR is something else. A long, lossy line or common mode current. SWR is really just a measurement of reflected power. So if you have a long, lossy line, what happens to that reflected wave as it makes a couple of trips along the feed line? Well, some of it's going to be turned into heat giving you a lower SWR reading on your meter. Common mode current is current flowing on the shield of your coax because of an unbalanced load or not using a ballon. That can also confuse your meter. So, to really know my SWR, I have to connect my SWR meter to the feed point, which is 40 feet in the air, uh, then key the transmitter, and then use binoculars to read the meter? No, you don't have to do that. Just use a graph like this, published by the ARRL. It shows what your SWR is at the antenna, based on the characteristic loss of your coax. So let's say you want to know what your actual SWR is on 30 meters. You're using RG8X coax, which has a characteristic loss of about 1 dB per 100 feet at 10 megahertz. Your SWR meter in the shack says your SWR is 2 to 1. So what is your actual SWR? So the SWR at the transmitter is right here, 2 to 1. And our characteristic loss of RG8X is 1 dB at 10 megahertz. So we go up to 1 dB loss, which is this line right here. And go over here and we get our actual SWR at the antenna, which is actually about 2.5 to 1. So hardly any difference. Now you can twiddle the knobs of your transmatch all you want that SWR cannot be changed. Well, why not? Well, let's replace the antenna with a 100 ohm resistor you found in your junk box. Can you change the value of that resistor to something else by adjusting the tuner? No. There's nothing you can do to make that 100 ohm resistor something else. You can dip it in chocolate or spray it with Windex. It's going to stay 100 ohms. So you will still have an SWR of 2 to 1 on the feed line. The only way to change the impedance of an antenna is to make it longer, shorter, raise it higher, drop it closer to the ground, and so on. Also, a transmission line with standing waves is like a long impedance transformer. There are an infinite number of impedances as you move along the line. So, since a tuner can't tune out SWR in the feed line, what good is it? Might as well put my tuner on eBay. No, don't do that. You still need a tuner for two very good reasons. Number one, it provides your transmitter 
with a 50 on a match. That keeps you from burning up the finals. And two, regardless of SWR, a tuner enables full transmitter power to be delivered to the load despite the mismatch. How is that possible? Through something called a conjugate match. It is the conjugate match that allows us to keep our transmitters happy by providing them with a 50 ohm impedance and also deliver full power to the antenna even if there is a mismatch which causes reflected power. What's a conjugate match? Conjugate match means that if in one direction, from a junction, the impedance has the dimensions R plus JX, then in the opposite direction, the impedance will have the dimensions R minus JX. A double RL antenna book. So, a conjugate match cancels reactants at a junction, like where the coax connects to your antenna. Since the reactance is canceled, the transmitter can deliver its full power to the antenna. Maximum power transfer occurs when the load impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the source impedance, the maximum power transfer theorem. Wait, you're claiming an antenna tuner in the shack creates a conjugate match at the feed point, which could be 100 feet down the line? No, I'm not claiming that at all. I'm just repeating what antenna engineers have known for years. The only people who don't understand that are CBers and ham radio operators, most of them anyway, it seems. When a conjugate match is accomplished at any of the junctions in the system, any reactance appearing at any junction is canceled by an equal and opposite reactance, which also includes any reactance appearing in the load. A double RL antenna book. That part of the antenna book was written by the high priest of antenna and transmission line engineering, Walt Maxwell, W2DU, another great engineer who tried to kill ham radio myths, was Kurt Sturba. That was his pen name. It was actually Peter Onegian, I hope I pronounced that right, W6QEU, the founder of the Jampro Antenna Company. He had several patents, including the circular polarized FM antenna used by almost all commercial FM stations. Well, okay, I, I see how a tuner enables delivery of full power to a mismatch load. But what about line loss caused by SWR? The amount of additional loss caused by SWR has been grossly exaggerated. It's a myth. Let's look at another ARRL graph. Let's go back to our previous example where the actual SWR on 100 feet of RG8X on 30 meters was 2.5 to 1. The characteristic loss of that cable would be 1 dB. Line loss when matched, 1 dB. Now the additional loss caused by 2.5 to 1 SWR is, let's go up, well here's 2. 2.5 would be about right here, and we go over to additional loss in dB caused by standing waves 0.3 dB, three-tenths of a decibel. Is that bad? No, it's nothing. Stop worrying about SWR unless it's, you know, really high, like up in here. So no, a trans match cannot tune out SWR between it and the antenna, but it does enable transfer of full power to the antenna. And perhaps more importantly, it provides your expensive transceiver with a 50 ohm load, avoiding expensive repair bills. Consider subscribing to this channel in 73.